women have led groundbreaking research in public health, vaccines, treatments, and innovative technology, and have been on the front lines of COVID-19 responses, scientists, healthcare workers, and more. Yet, the gender gap in science and technology uh, is still as wide as ever. According to an upcoming report from the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, only 33% of researchers are women, despite the fact that they represent 45 and 55% of students in bachelor's and master's level studies, respectively. The COVID-19 pandemic is, uh, seems to be poised to widen the existing gender disparities, especially for women scientists and the early stages of their careers. Uh, joining me live from the United Kingdom to throw more light on this is the executive director of the Royal Academy of Science uh, International Trust, Dr. Nizreen El Hashemidi. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Doctor, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, you're welcome to the show. Um, so with where things are currently, do you think enough recognition is being given to the efforts of um, women in your field? Well, thank you very much indeed for uh, having me. Uh, first of all, actually, uh, six years ago, we can say that there was not enough uh, recognition for women in science, particularly for their role in uh, uh, development in health, in uh, physics, engineering, medicine, in all fields of uh, sciences. Uh, after uh, the proclamation of February 11 as uh, the International Day of Women and Girls in Science, which we championed as an organization in, with the government of Malta and other governments in uh, 2015, we start to see the world turning into recognizing the role of women in science in any sustainable development program, recognizing their role as scientists. Uh, even women themselves start to recognize their, uh, what they can do. So yes, uh, now there is a good recognition. You can tell this uh, from the uh, February 11. You can tell how many governments, how many prime ministers, heads of states, uh, how many organizations, even private sector now, recognizing the role of women in science. However, rem uh, we are not done yet. So we recognize the role of women in science, what they can do, uh, why we need women in science, uh, why we need to give them equal opportunities. But uh, still, um, we are not done yet. There is a lot to be done, particularly to keep women in sciences. Fantastic stuff, thank you. And in fact, the, our brand new Director General of the World Trade Organization, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo-Wela, at a summit that's ongoing right now, uh, Lagos uh, 2020 Economic Summit, she was pushing the Lagos State Governor on getting more women involved in his cabinet and in various levels of, uh, of the commercial capital of Nigeria. So I wanna ask you, based on what you said, how can women in your field leverage on the recognition that, you know, according to you, it seems to be improving? Well, uh, first of all, uh, the, uh, all the percentages that were uh, said before, that women in STEM less than 30%, then women researchers are 30%, we need here just to recog uh, that created a kind of stereotype, particularly in younger generation that they felt like every STEM field is male dominant and it, it is not for them, et cetera. Now with this recognition, they just found that women can achieve more. Women themselves feel more confident. They don't feel inferior anymore. They feel that they are equal. So this is the main thing. We need to bring that feeling of equality within women themselves, which we, I believe we achieved within uh, five years now, and this is the sixth year uh, of organizing the International Day of Women and Girls in Science, which we turned into a global movement, in fact, as an organization with member states, etc. Now, we, what we need is just to bring the role of women in science, to encourage women in science into diplomacy, into policy making. Uh, to have a, a say. So the role of women in science is not just only in a laboratory or in research uh, or just in, uh, you know, like uh, academia. Uh, they have a, a big role in policy making, action plans, reforming, et cetera, et cetera. So this is very important. And once women, they have the courage 
to go into those fields or younger generations to see that the uh, wide horizon of sciences, what, to, uh, what does it mean to be a woman in science and what they can achieve through this. I think we can, uh, governments will have, uh, by themselves, we will have the 50-50, if not the full government is, women, is composed of women in science, of course. Great stuff. Very, very encouraging. So while there are improvements on that end here in Africa, there is still, uh, you know, a sizable gender gap. How can communities here, women here in professional services, how can they, how can we improve things on our side of the pond? Well, uh, there is, a, although I am not African, uh, but I am, I have long history in Africa as uh, being a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad and as well uh, being uh, myself as a royal princess, I worked a lot with Nigeria, with other African countries as well. So uh, I always say Africa has a lot to offer. African women in science are doing amazing work. Uh, they are contributing to the uh, science fields, but we don't hear about them. This is the biggest problem. We don't hear about them. Why we don't hear about them? That's number one. Number two, um, uh, what is our role, those who are in the North, how we can collaborate with our colleagues who are in the South? This is another issue. The African Union, I always say, uh, the African Union has the best science policy framework I ever seen in my life. Uh, but it is about the implementation now, how to implement it. And to implement any policy depends on the country's situation on these uh, society circumstances. So in order to improve the situation of women in science, their contribution, we need to always focus on the social aspects and the cultural dimension, which with this we can bring more women into science, more recognition. It's not only about the recognition, it is about the achievements. Um, now we talk about uh, the African women, how we can hear their voices outside, how we can bring their voices into the international arena. This needs uh, two ways. Like uh, uh, last year, in February 11, we managed to get a sponsorship for flight tickets and uh, for the uh, 20 African women in science that they rocked the international community with their work. So, in fact, we need to encourage such kind of act and the collaboration and also to ease the publication of uh, research from Africa into uh, the international uh, journals and arenas. And the main thing is to have to believe that Africa has more role models than those in, outside. So in every, wherever you turn your face, there is an amazing there are amazing women in science. There is another issue we need to bring attention to is the brain drain. So as much as we bring international uh, recognition for women in science, we need uh, women in science themselves to remain in the country, in the society, and to help in building the infrastructure within their institutions to help as well in developing further research within their institutions rather than to take the easy path and go outside Great or travel outside. Great stuff. There's another conversation on the fact that there's incentives that keep, that keep brain drain going, but maybe we'll have that conversation uh, another time. Very interesting stuff. Dr. Nizreen uh, El Hashemide, uh, Executive Director, Royal Academy of Science uh, International Trust. Thank you so much for taking us through how we can make improvements in the medical and science fields for women. Thank you.